92. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the regular monthly meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee, which I am calling to order at 6.58 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. of the committee have expressed a desire to introduce themselves to you. So starting on the viewers right. Ginny Bridal Russell, school board representative. Regina Barnes, board of selectmen representative. Mike Pierce. Brian Lobham. Steve Henderson. And proceeding around to my right. Mike Bluff. Stephen LeBranch. Timothy Citizen Jones, voters representative. <laughs> Danielle Augustine. Uh, Bob Land, Precinct Representative. Excellent. All righty. We have, let's see, we're missing Sonny at the moment. Yeah. And I'm going to keep track of this so Eileen doesn't go crazy. Sonny's not here yet. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So Sonny's the only one absent at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to. And that's 10, 18. All righty. The minutes of September 20. Who would like to move adoption of the minutes? And then we'll ask for corrections. I'll make the motion. Uh, Mr. Clough is, has moved the minutes of September 20, seconded by Mr. Pierce. Okay. Corrections. We want to get the minutes handled before we do any business at our new uh, current meeting. Yes, I have corrections. Okay, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> it appears to be on page one. The vote on the uh, chairman has someone named Tim Jones in abstention when I, I did not vote. Okay, I abstained as well. So you are you didn't vote? Correct. Just put no vote. Okay. Oh. Anybody else have any corrections that you can think of? Yes, oh, we I will do. be more orderly in the future. Yes. Page three. Page three. The last sentence. It says, Mr. Jones questioned the contract extension of four years for the superintendent, uh, which I did not question. I simply stated that I look forward to favorably reviewing the related warrant article. Right. And you questioned the funding, I think. I did not question it at all. No? I uh, simply pointed out that this budget committee had education from NHMA in May, in which we learned that all multi-year contracts require yes. a separate with, warrant article. With a monetary value attached. Correct, correct absolutely. There was no monetary value attached to her four-year contract. Well, of course there would be. No, there free? wouldn't. It's, it's evaluated on a year-to-year -year basis. Her salary is evaluated on a year-to-year -year basis. So, oh, so with her um, evaluation, then comes so that her means compensation. that means that her pay will not be in the default budget. Then. Her pay will no. be in the default budget because it was in the budget the year before. Because she's under minutes? contract. I mean, that's what we discussed at right. May. That's why it has to be reviewed. Right. What what Judy is saying, I think, but we're, is we're off topic here. With the, well, I'm talking about the minutes. If you want yes. to discuss that, oh. I'm happy to have a discussion on it. Okay. But relative to what I said, which is okay. the topic at hand. All right. Go ahead. That I look forward to favorably reviewing the associated warrant article with her four-year contract extension. Excellent. Now I'd like that corrected to reflect that. Uh, that will be corrected in the minutes of this evening. Mr. LeBranch? No, I was just saying point of order with doing the minutes. Thank you. So. Okay. Everybody happy? I'm happy. Now, we still lack a member to fill... Wait, wait. Oh. Any, more, any more corrections? We didn't we have oh, to move to I, I, Okay, I did ask if anybody had any more corrections. Okay, then you want to vote on adopting the corrections the to the minutes. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. It's a okay. good thing you're here. Moved by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Henderson. In favor of adopting the minutes of September 20 as corrected. Unanimous. 
There we go. Wow, that's good. good. Okay, that's now, um, we have a vacancy on the Budget Committee due to Mr. Bridal leaving. And we have had a volunteer. Mr. Marer is here. And uh, he's a 30-year resident of town. I'd like to ask David to introduce himself to you. And uh, he and I met uh, earlier. I gave him my copy of the 2016 budget so he could familiarize himself with uh, what, what we do. And uh, we had a pleasant conversation on RSA 32. David? My name is David Mara. <clears throat> I moved to Hampton in 1960, Labor Day weekend. I came up with four kids. A little louder. I ended up with six. <laughs> we all went to Winnicana High School. Um, while I was here, I was a uh, cup master of one, one of the scouts for three years. Scout troops, I think it's 170, don't remember the name. I was on the Sacred Heart School Board um, for a term and finance chairman there. And... Uh, Worked at Liberty Mutual for 46 years and retired four years ago. And I got asked to, after I had a few conversations with somebody during tennis, if I would possibly uh, look into volunteering for the opening that was here. And I thought about it, and I would like to see how it goes. I would even think of considering about running in, the in March of next year for it. That's if I fit. I have to fit with you, and you have to fit with me, and all that sort of stuff. I, I wouldn't want to do it for the sake of just being on the on the group, the Budcom. I want to do it if I can really add some positive structure to it and positive input. If I'm not able to do that, I think you'd be looking for somebody else. But that that's my desire to be at that level. Excellent. Uh, questions for David around on my right? Any questions? Or any on my left? I'd like to make a motion Okay. to appoint David to that position. Until the March election. Exactly. Second. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Lapham. In favor? Unanimous. Okay. Then I appreciate that. And David, why don't you take a seat next to uh, Danielle, or I don't know if you want to sit near Bob at the end of the... Or we'll be sitting next to Bob either way. Madam, yeah. Chair. <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, and I will phone uh, Jane Cipher first thing in the morning and have uh, her swear in David when he can get to the town office. So for this evening, he's participating but not voting. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Any, any judge or justice of the peace can swear him into office. And we are fortunate enough to have a justice of the peace right here. So we could swear him in the office if our yes. Justice of the Peace was willing to assist us. Yes, however, however, no, Jane doesn't have to. No. Any Justice of the Peace can do right. it. Mm -hmm. However, Jane wishes to do this. I've asked her before, so I'm not going to cross her. So right. thank you very much, Tim, but I, I'm not going to do that. Right. Okay, so I'm sorry. It's a nice suggestion. Jane has the forms and she has to sign. She and prefers to do it. Now, I just okay, as well proceeding. Reviewing our schedule, uh, last month, uh, Mr. Puff and I did a little scrambling, and I did a tentative schedule of work sessions and hearings. Um, I have been, uh, Mr. Bridal, Chairman Bridal, and I have been communicating because I was getting pretty alarmed as the calendar is, is clicking down here, and the selectmen have only done the uh, general government and last night the fire department. I did some research online back 10 years and find that the first work session of the budget committee has been on the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, or 30th of October in every year, at least 10 years back. Um, I had been in the town office and confirmed the schedule dates that Nick Bridal had, had initially checked on with Christina, and I went ahead and confirmed those dates and typed them into our schedule. However, um, Mr. Bridal feels that the earliest date the Board of Selectmen will be able to complete their review will be November 7th. So that gets rid of October 27, <coughs> November 1, and November 3. Of course, you're referring I, to Rusty Bridal now, right? Right. Chairman Bridal. Chairman. Well, yeah. the former 
there's no longer a chairman bridle on the budget committee. Yeah, I know. I just yeah. wanted to be clear okay. what you're talking about. So we have exchanged emails back and forth. I did go in and speak both with the administrative assistant in looking at the schedule uh, and with Fred, and I had expressed to Fred that I was really concerned. We looked at his calendar, and I was really concerned about the trying to make the date of the 27th, so it's obvious the selectmen won't be able to do that. That means we will lose days. November is a challenge with Thanksgiving, and everybody wants to be on cable and have the meeting on, so it's hard to find a slot. Um, okay. Rusty Bridal offered the 8th of November, but I really can't see that happening if they're just closing up on the 7th. So we're going to be squeezed for time. If you'd be so kind, uh, I had uh, emailed Rusty today, and when he gets back to me, I will do a revised schedule for you. But October 27th is out, so you're free for the rest of this month. You don't have to run around the kitchen get, getting everything ready to show up for budget committee because the 27th is gone. So I will do a little fine tuning okay. uh, with the chairman of the board of selectmen. So I have also asked for those of you who got my email or read it, I've also asked to have the books given to us ahead of time because that's going to mean they all need to, have to be printed out. Right. And a PDF circulated so people can have a chance to look online. So uh, we still have a little bit of scrambling on our dates. I will say, and I, I'm not trying to be mean, that every year the selectmen have to present their proposed expenditures and revenues to the Budget Committee for review, and that's known from March on. And I think that it is very difficult for us uh, when the schedule for the selectmen reviewing their budget request gets backed up like this. So we're going to have to really hustle. How many of you guys have been watching the selectmen, the two selectmen's meetings where you had? I'll get you in one second, Sonny, I promise. If you've been trying to follow the yeah, reruns, actually, or, I, yeah, because the fire chief was in last night. And there's a big challenge in the fire department with all the new personnel. So, uh, but anyway, that's my sad story. And I will revamp the schedule. And everything I send to you will have a date on it. Yes. Um, last year, I believe a motion was made. We asked for the budget Excel files. Mm -hmm. I, I can't quite remember mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. You mentioned something about PDFs, but I think that oh. it, it was they asked for Excel files, and that was it worked out pretty well. Or before last, that I had to pay fifty dollars. Yes, he did. Online. Okay, contrary. So, yeah. could I make a motion that we ask for the Excel files? Excel again? spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. yeah, second. Okay. The Excel file is used to generate the budget book, the printed budget book. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to see the Excel file. We the want PDFs that. is useless. Okay, then. If you would be so kind, I Mr. LeBranch, to stipulate in your motion that you are asking that the Budget Committee members be provided with the Excel spreadsheet. Yes, I believe in, that's correct. As Excel timely file. Excel spreadsheet file. Okay. In a timely manner. Mm -hmm. And seconded by Mr. Jones. They can do. They can surely give it to us at the same time as they give us a budget book because it's all from the same. They document. can actually give it to us faster. There's enough to print it or copy yeah. it. I've got right. a question. Um, yes, sir. Haven't they voted on general government at this point? Some department. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, why can't they provide us that? Because I don't so believe they. I don't believe they voted on it yet. Oh, we didn't vote voted in term general budget. government. We voted on now, small, so, you know, small sections. We didn't right. approve yeah, right. last That's night. Mm -hmm. Motion on the table. It's, it's, it's not. It's it's too premature, Sonny. I'm afraid. Okay. We tried this about <coughs> six <coughs> years ago, and it got too confusing yeah. later on. Yeah. Motion on the table. Okay. In favor of Mr. LeBranch's motion to request the Excel spreadsheet. 
for us file. the file for us to review as soon as they have it. <coughs> oh, glory, I'm sorry. Ready. And are we... We're unanimous. Yes. Unanimous? At least I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next thing on tonight's schedule is the, the IT committee. Okay, so we're done with that. And yeah. we are... Uh, and I'll get the revised work session yeah, schedule yeah. out to you as soon as I can. Well, as you know, last meeting, uh, Regina graciously, graciously volunteered to follow up and try to get the meeting with appropriate personnel in town to uh, discuss the cloud email solution. Uh, and Regina did... Uh, as she promised, she, she had a meeting with uh, appropriate personnel, and she did uh, email us uh, the very next day, approximately at noon. And uh, the answer was, essentially, regarding the meeting request, the answer was no, or not answered. Uh, but we were told that there was a quote in the works, and they expected it the very following week. And... Uh, but the following week, what happened during the Board of Selectmen's meeting was the um, IT budget was presented and they had discussions on the cloud email. And at that time, uh, they, they testified that they had not prepared quotes yet and uh, they planned on doing a separate warrant article on this. And uh, as soon as they get done getting quotes and reviewing the quotes, then they would tell the Selectmen about those quotes or something like that. So that's where we are. Um, we're not getting a meeting, or at least our most recent request, which is now our third, two through Nick and one through Regina, to have a meeting, uh, has still proved fruitless in its attempt. Um, and I, Mike and I met and discussed this and determined that it was probably fruitless to continue asking for a meeting, since each time we do and whatever whoever does it, we get a non-response to the actual question. We get the answer to a different question. Want to address that, Regina? Well, I, as far as I did meet with Christy, I believe it was the next day I had yeah. a meeting with her already, and she said that her and the assistant town manager were working on getting a quote from a company about the 360 service for the cloud. And then, as Mr. Jones stated in the selectman meeting, like he said, in the same boat as him, I haven't followed up on it further but we're supposed to be in supposed quotes on it. And I haven't seen any war I haven't seen any warrant articles, and nor do I know for a fact that it's gonna be a warrant article, but that is what was stated in the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And I did address, you know, your concerns about how you'd like to talk to someone mm -hmm. and um, how you might have an ulterior way of sort of cutting out the third guy. But I tried and unfortunately just didn't work out. It's twenty sixteen. Can't we get the communications sorted out? What, you know, how, how many years are we going to lag behind? I had a conversation with Paul Paquette who told me that his, his uh, server and his equipment is outdated and in bad condition. And I, I don't know where we're going, but we're not going anywhere very fast around here. I, I don't know whether that's something that you could handle out of this year's budget or, you know, insert into next year's budget, but somebody's going to have to do something about the communications in here. Oh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. But we were, you know, we were told that we were going to be getting quotes that we would be able to review, and that has yet to come to us, so. But then there was the conflicting well, message that occurred at the selectors meeting the, you know, five days later that they haven't requested for it yet because they're still preparing. So that's this is the problem uh, in dealing with this. The IT subcommittee uh, has been trying to deal with um, issues related to IT for some time, very quietly, not stirring up or ruffling feathers. Uh, and we continue to meet with the same theme of of uh, non-responsive answers. Um, are answers that are inconsistent with statements that are subsequently made very shortly thereafter. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a real challenge for us to proceed 
uh, in any in any sensible way. Well, I mean, this should not be a controversial thing, mm. and and when we try to advance the the topic, we're we're left with. A dilemma, because uh, no matter how we proceed, we, we see a controversy developing, and we're, we've been striving to avoid controversy, because right. there's no reason for it. So that's why we're, we're kind of like, uh, kind of stuck, and when Mike and I discussed what we might do next, uh, in terms of our service to the Budget Committee, which we are an organ of the Budget Committee, our job is to serve the Budget mm -hmm. Committee. And and so the question that we, we decided that was appropriate for us to address was, how can we serve the budget committee from this point going forward? And that was to gather more information. And toward that end, um, we decided that we should make a motion and ask the budget committee for authority to ask the town manager questions related to two topics now that are in, uh, on the table. One is the IT audit, which was brought up at the Selectman's meeting, the nature, terms, et cetera, of that IT audit. Yeah as well as uh, the nature of quotes requested in the vendors relative to the cloud email solution. Yeah. So uh, if we're done discussing the report, then I'd like to move into that motion, if you would permit me. I would say so. You know, Regina, sometimes you have to pound on the table and holler if you want <laughs> something done. Okay, well, I am going to say before you make a motion that we, as the Board of Selectmen, made a motion not last week. I believe it was, well, three weeks ago because we had Columbus Day. Oh, yeah. um, that everything was going to go from the chairman of the budget committee to me to the respective. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make the motion, we agree on it as a budget committee, Mary Louise, whatever we want to say, I will get over to the appropriate, to Rusty, which will go to Fred. And I mean, I'm at the town hall three times a week. Okay. So I mean, I can, I'll follow up on it okay. with that. But I think we should just make sure we do those procedures so that okay. we don't ruffle any feathers. So. <clears throat> Well, I'm, I'm, uh, Mr. Jones, if we may, <coughs> would you frame your motion and email me a copy of your motion so I don't have to wait for the minutes to be constructed? Right. Okay. And I will then forward tomorrow to Regina. Yes. And with the request that we make this evening so we can get off the dime and do something useful. Excellent. Sonny? Yeah, excuse this, me. I did not agree Regina, to that. I have oh, watched the water selectmen not yesterday, but last week <coughs> department heads were being questioned on the budget. Yes. It's almost impossible. All I heard was great job, great job. It'd be useful if they could put some numbers up on the screen and at least give the people who are watching some information on what's going on. Yeah, I think the only reason why they don't do that is because nothing has, like that, well, we did finalize some sections last night, but prior to that we hadn't finalized anything, but so. There's discussion, the number should be presented to the, to the town so we'll be aware of what's going on. I mean, there's no point watching the Board of Selectmen if the people come in, the Board of Selectmen say, great job, and we don't know what the heck that about. Madam Chair, Sonny is making a, you know, a, a good point, but I would like to finish up on the IT topic. Yes. I think having a discussion on that point is also something we should follow up on, not as an IT subcommittee, but as an <laughs> overall committee. Okay. The, the idea uh, in terms of the protocol that we <coughs> and Mike decided to employ was under RSA 32, which defines the protocol, is that when the budget committee makes a request for the data, they make the request of the data either to the board of selectmen or the town manager, whoever's appropriate source of that information. Okay, and so that's why I'm asking to the budget committee to make a vote to an, an authorize me to generate the re, the requested data and send it to the town manager. Okay, and the nature of it will be relative to, to IT topic, who was, who was the vendor hired, what terms were established in in contracting this IT audit, what expenditures to date have taken place, what anticipated expenses related to this IT audit. Uh, the scope of the audit, is it covering the whole town or just some subsection of the town? Uh, what appropriation line is it being uh, made from? What begin and end dates of the uh, IT audit uh, are, are, have been agreed to? And then, of course, relative to the nature of the cloud email, uh, what are the nature of the quotes, quotes that have been requested and what vendors have been requested? So it's going to be on those main bullet points that I'm going to generate 
a email, which I will then send to both you and the town manager, requesting the information. Mm -hmm. If the budget committee chooses to empower me, are you making a motion so, so we can second it? So that is my motion. Yes. Okay, I'll second it. Okay. Nick, do you understand? And you want to send a copy to Regina as well as the town manager, please. Well, I'll include the entire budget committee, which would include. Your okay. 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 All right. Item information, if I might. Yes. If, does that mean in these requests to the board of selectmen from this committee no longer go through you directly? Well, they, the the yeah. understanding yeah. will be that when you vote on Tim's motion, that the chair will pick up on the motion. It will be in my um, purview, and it's for him to go ahead and and contact. The motion I'm making is 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 a. RSA it's not consistent with the often stated protocol of the board yeah. selectmen. The motion I'm making is consistent with RSA 32 colon 22, yeah. which says upon request of the budget committee, the governing body of the town, or the town manager, or other administrative officials, shall forthwith submit to the budget committee a comparative statement of all appropriations and all expenses by them made in such detail as the budget committee may require. Now, the requirements of that detail I just listed to you in terms of bullet items, and I'll, of course, send it in a, in a diplomatic fashion mm -hmm. in terms of the requesting of the data. But that is, a, that is the essence of the email. The protocol is defined in law, and no board of selectmen can change the law. I'm not talking about the protocol. We're talking about the way it gets. The process that to this committee said it would follow would be to direct everything from chair to chair, structurally. No, no, this committee never said that. Members of the committee have said that. But the Board of Selectmen voted. It's the Board of Selectmen do not define the rules for the budget committee. They have nothing to do with the rules of the budget committee. I mean, and certainly they cannot modify the law, and this right. is the law that I'm citing in which it defines the protocol. Okay, so Mr. Jones is asking our acceptance of his motion so we can get off the table on this IT dilemma, and if you vote in the affirmative, then he will, with the sanction of this committee under RSA 3222, he will go ahead and forward that request to the manager and the Board of Selectmen and copies to us. All I'm saying is the Board of Selectmen weeks ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was, made a motion that all requests go from the Chairman of the Budget Committee to the Selectmen Rep, the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and the, board of, the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen handles it. We made it for all. We made it for the Planning Board as well. We I, made it for all committees. I, I hate to disillusion you, though. The Board of Selectmen does not speak for the Budget Committee. The Budget Committee is independent. I realize that. Okay. But so, I'm trying to get the problem solved. No, so I agree with it, that. I understand that. So but isn't it just, I mean, if, if it's going to go to me, I'm not just going to let no, it sit no, there and do nothing about no, no, it. No, no, Copy to you, but the uh, his motion will be directed to... Oh, Mary Louise, we, we may find some room here. Yes. If instead of me mailing it directly to the town manager, can I mail it to the town manager via you so that you're going to be handing it to him. Is that acceptable? I would prefer if you email, if when you email it, you email Mary Louise, myself, and Rusty. If okay. it's going to me, it's going to go to Fred. Well, it's it's directed to Fred, so that's that's the key point. Fine. Point. Okay. All right. So you're okay with that then? Yes. Okay. Then I, I will I will modify so my writing so that it goes to now, the, But you I need mean, to now. It's going to be, it's still going to be addressed to the town manager, but it will be sent to the three individuals Regina just mentioned, right. with the understanding that Regina will play the post office and get it to the town manager, yes. right? Okay, that's she that's will, perfectly acceptable. She will advocate. Um, we, we can compromise on these minor okay. points. I mean, not a big deal. Right. No problem. But now, for the sake, bless us, of the secretary, will you now just restate? You don't have to read every item, but just restate your motion and the and the channels through which your motion will go. My motion is to have the budget committee authorize me to author a request for data relative to the IT audit and cloud email solution that has been recently discussed uh, at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. With this communication going to? As specified by Regina's communication mechanism 
I will, I will, conf I will, con I will conform to that. You will email to the chair, and the chair will forward the email. No, to I'm emailing to, email to Regina, to Rusty, and yourself, with okay. the understanding that Regina is going to so, play the post office and get it to the town manager. I assume Regina has no objection to me be or CCCing the rest of the budget committee, right? No, that's okay. fine. Okay. Yeah. So th th uh, that's my inclination is to include well, everybody I anyway. I would forward to the budget committee anyway because I'm forwarding as long everything as everyone gets it, I'm happy. to you guys that comes in. Okay. You no, know Jenny's looking forward I to it. I think I am. <laughs> really, you know. Let's go around the barn a couple more times. <laughs> I think we're all sufficiently confused, but, but you do understand the focus of Mr. Jones' motion. So those in favor of Mr. Jones' motion in behalf of the Budget Committee's IT Committee to get some help from the Board of Selectmen in resolving the problem. Thank you. In favor? Okay. Bridal, uh, Barnes, Pierce, Henderson, Plough, LaBranch, Jones, Augustine, Ladd and Woolsey. Opposed? Uh, Kravitz and Lapham. Any abstentions? And Mr. Um, Maurer is not yet voting. Uh, okay. I think Madam Chair, I we believe did that it. Sonny was discussing a point yes. of some import. Yeah. Yeah. Back well, to Sonny. Even though he voted against my motion. <laughs> I voted against it because we're the budget committee. What you're talking about is a function of the board of selectmen. The fact that they're not doing anything about no, it. No, that motion's done with. I'm not asking for an explanation, Sonny. I'm I mean, okay we've with got it. A budget but you talked about getting information relative to the budget as it's being discussed at the Board of Selectmen now rather than after but the fact, right? But they're not, if they were looking for bids, they would have put a bid request out. And obviously they're not at that point. So. Okay. I don't, I don't know what that means Mr. it doesn't matter but <laughs> he's talking to the motion that we already voted on as mr. opposed to mr pierce we have to be able to hear you some of these meetings get the, get near a microphone or something i don't understand what you are meaning now mr kravitz a bid for what if you're what talking item? about a, a bid to put the, the server on the cloud i thought we were talking about that requires that was a, those, they're asking for quotes not bids you don't do well, bids. They haven't asked for quotes yet. All right. Well, that's what we've been. That's what they said at the meeting. I don't know if they have or not. Actually, we were reported by Regina's email through Christie that they had actually had an active quote out there. Ah. So you have, you have to, to have a oh, yeah. horse before the cart. Okay. Don't be careful of the background conversations because it's really hard for people at home to understand what's going on. You know, during the initial part of the conversation on that motion, Sonny started talking on a somewhat different topic, although it was information related. And I suggested we finish the report and then to let Sonny speak to his uh, point. And that's why I brought it up. I didn't ask for an explanation of why you voted the way you voted, okay? Okay. And my point was simply <laughs> that the IT policy of the no. town is a function no. of the Board of Selectmen, not the Budget Committee. Yeah, but that's related to the last oh, okay. motion. Weren't you making a point that the Board of Selectmen should be pointing up the numbers budget the request? Yeah, yeah, numbers yeah. on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So I was giving you an opportunity to go back to that and finish up your thoughts. Well, even if you can't quite hear what you just said. <laughs> okay. My, I'll write you an email. All right, it's not for well, we can move on. So my concern is that it's very difficult for us to try to do our homework to be prepared when because this is a huge request. The the proposed uh, operating budget uh, expenditures and revenues is a great big chunk of tax money. And to the best of our ability, we want to try to prepare ourselves so that when we actually sit down to negotiate and work on the figures, we want to be as well informed as possible. Ginny, you had a comment? No. <laughs> <laughs> you edited it. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to comment on Sonny's point, if I may. Please. Because I watched the last night's Board of Selectmen's meeting, and I appreciate you know the desire to have the whole budget completed, and it's just a working document and all that. But it's not entirely true. Um, to the extent that anything submitted to the to a public body, such as the Board of Selectmen, as soon as it's submitted to them, it becomes a public document and is subject to 91A requests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
working document or otherwise. There's no confidentiality attached once Second, it's brought yeah. Secondly, in public. Secondly, uh, as you, when you get your budget book, uh, you'll see, as we see every year, we'll see a column for department head requests, a column for the time manager's recommendation, and a column for the board of selectmen. Yeah. Okay? What you're working on is the column for the board of selectmen. Right? In order for you to do that, you have to have the department heads already done, the time managers already done. Mm -hmm. So that could be supplied to the public. if someone were to make a 91A request, or, alternatively, if the Budget Committee made the request as the Budget Committee under RSA 32.22. I'm not making such a proposal, I'm just making clarification that 91A uh, demands that if someone invokes 91A and makes the request for the data, they are entitled to have it. That's my statement. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, uh, I'm on, confused, Jenny. Did I? No, do? I know exactly, and I don't know what the problem is. We've been doing budgets for over 30 years that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. We know what, when you're supposed to have the budget yeah. deliberations done. You right. know when you're supposed to have the book done and to the budget committee. Right. There should be no question. It should be here, should be done, and we should be able to move forward. I don't know what the problem is, but it's really the process has been very well laid out for over 30, 40 years. You're right. And Jenny and I go way back yeah. on the whole process. But uh, this, I thought last year was a rather messed up year. But this year is getting there. Um, we really should have the courtesy of having the proposed expenditures and revenues to this committee by the end of this month. And I, it's obviously not going to happen. Well, the only reason that you make that observation is based on we've always done it that way. Well, from a time parameter. Right. Tim, I, understand that. I, I understand that. I understand reliance on tradition. And I'm not well, it's not tradition, Tim. You've got to have this done and done by the yes. uh, 1st of December to, in order to start your public hearings on this stuff. I, I, so I, you I, don't I, have time to fool around. You have to get yeah. your budget committee together. You have to review. You have to have a book to look at. If they're done on the 3rd, they're not going to have the book to us till the 10th, Correct. probably. Correct. So then you're two weeks into this. Now you got six weeks to go till the middle of December. You have to do it. It's the Budget Committee's due diligence to look at the select, the budget proposed, the selectmen's changes, the, t the head, uh, heads. the department heads. Thanks, Mike. And then the then the um, selectmen's changes. We need to see all three of those figures in order to say, okay, well, here we are. Yeah. But there's no, you know, it should be done by the first of November, by the yeah. end of October, Correct. first of November, Correct. and into our hands so we can start deliberation. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not done by the time we state statute says you have to do so many town meetings and all that, so mm -hmm. yes, I do get hepped up about procedures and budget committees, <laughs> but it's I don't know. Good. Jenny, Thank you. I, Jenny, I appreciate your, your very impressive experience in this time. Well, and I, what you just said is absolutely true. Well, thank you. And what I was going to say was not going to be in dispute of that at all. Okay. What's the, this the problem, to you of is the problem is that, uh, as I see it, is that we rely on the tradition because it's basically been tradition or that we've always done it this way. We've always had the budget by the, the last week in October. So we just assume as a budget committee that we're going to have it this year. Okay. And here we are this year, and that assumption has proven to be false, apparently. So it's not tradition. Right? It's However, procedure. No, no, it is. It's there procedure. Is, there is nothing written in law that requires it to be done by the We last don't have week to October. meet at all as far as the law is concerned. And we could meet one night right. and so chop what, a whole so, pile. So all of your point about it being on time and not being on time is questionable who establishes the time. I look at the law. I see no establishment of time there. Mr. However... If we were, as a budget committee, to actually say, say in our June meeting, that we want the budget fully done by the last week in October, then we have set the timetable. RSA 32.22 gives us the authority to establish timetables mm -hmm. for certain data. And, and I believe that the budget committee... Tim, uh, make that motion. It's too late now for that yeah, relative to the June. Uh, and, and besides, we've got promises now which I'm sure will be fulfilled. I'm only pointing out that we have, as a budget committee, we have no right to be cr criticizing the budget committee, I mean the board of selectmen, for not being on time when no timetable has been set except for we've always done it that way. All right? Let's look at ourselves and critique ourselves before we critique others. And so I say that you know, next year, we, 
set the timetable in June. You right. should Next have year, we ought to set the timetable in June. You should have set the timetable right. in June. So I'm critiquing the budget. Table this till next June. That's right. I think we should, Bob. Yeah. I like your suggestion, Mr. Ladd. I uh, second that motion. No, I already did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. moving right along. Yes, thank you. Uh, also on the agenda, uh, on our regular meeting agenda, should be the uh, Board of Selectmen representative and the School Board representative and the Hampton Beach Village District representative. So let's start with Regina, if she has any comments or enlightenment to provide us as the Selectman representative. I do. I just want to say that the reason was, I know most of you probably watched last night's meeting, mm -hmm. Christy thought that we wanted to go through last night, approve all the sections that we knew we could approve. The reason for doing that was so that she can get a jump on updating everything because we do want to get it to the budget committee as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And we are, and I believe Rusty said that at the end of last night's meeting, we're working and trying to do that for whatever reason, you know, it's not going to be by the end of October, but it is definitely, you know, we wanted to get it to you. We're not trying to not get it to you. It's just, I think one of the departments maybe needed more time. I'm not really sure what the circumstances are, but that's how it is. We're dealing with it. And the reason why we don't want to post, probably don't want to post it up to address Sonny's question is because it would be a little confusing because if we went after that and made changes, you got people at home looking at one thing and then it gets changed and it's just I guess there was a lot of confusion last year I think maybe things got because sent the up. budget was messed up last year as well especially the warrant articles but I'm not going to go back there well, um, but I want to say that you know in my past experience I've looked at several budgets on a weekly basis and what I do is you know obviously I do my ticks and tie everything out and you know look at last year and compare it and I think that our main goal as a Board of Selectmen is when it comes to the Budget Committee that it's in the best shape that we can get it in for you to have our you know third step finished product if you want to say you know the department heads the town manager and then the Board of Selectmen so that you get it one piece this is what everyone else has done now it's to the Budget Committee let the Budget Committee do their part what we're looking at now because of the delay is a very compressed schedule and i'm looking at i'm i don't believe that we will be able to meet on november 8th i don't think we'll have the paperwork i'm looking at november 10 15 and 29 best case scenario possibly december 1st and then i have to get the school board in now you're talking between a 26 and 27 million dollar budget proposal we are, you know, the, the calendar is there. The Board of Selectmen knows its responsibilities. And I think it's rather childish to not understand that you would hopefully want a thorough review of your request. In fact, Ginny and I go back to the time when the Selectmen used to take a whole Saturday and just sit there and, and invite the public to come in and give us their comments and so forth, just in preparation for uh, getting this together. We're talking a lot of money here. I personally want time to talk, especially after listening to the fire chief last night, because I have questions for him. I have questions on the MS 535 for finance. And by the way, Ed, that this is online. All of you could, could pick up on uh, the 535. Um, you, it's, it's inefficient, it's disrespectful, and it's exposing you as a board to the potential of this committee doing a less than thorough job because we simply will not have the time. And I went over this, and Mr. Bridal had gone over this, and I went over the meeting dates that were stipulated on the calendar, which is what I emailed to all of you. And this is no surprise, a budget review is done every year. So I am uh, not happy, but we'll deal with what we've got. Do you have anything else exciting on the calendar or anything else wonderful that's going to be done that we should know about? Other than the tax, oh, the tax rate, do the you want to dollars? confirm? Hmm? We, oh yes, the uh, 
six point four one. The, the town tax, the town portion yeah. of right, tax. Right. Yes, six point four one percent. Six point four six dollars and forty one cents. Yes. Per thousand for the town tax rate only. The county and the school and the village district will be added on to the bill to make the total tax rate, but that is a reduction from the $7 and something tax rate from last year. Okay, um, jo Regina, while you're here, and I, I know uh, Mr. Bean addressed this very nicely last night, but we as a board ought to be aware. It's a disgraceful situation with the New Hampshire retirement system. 1% revenue when they've been talking about 7 or 8% yeah. revenue mm -hmm. coming in on the retirement funds that they're holding. And I went ahead and got a copy. I talked to Christina briefly and uh, Fred, and I went ahead and got a copy of the, um, the new retirement regulations. So they keep increasing the amount of money that they're pulling out of people's salaries to fund their retirement expenses, and I don't know who's appointing who up in Concord, but that's a disgrace. That is a disgrace. The other thing that I have been looking at <laughs> is I saw a little crawl across the TV a couple of days ago, and it said, Social Security recipients didn't get a raise this year, but in the coming year, they're going to get a raise. 0.02% up to 0.05%. That times 10, you might be able to afford a cup of coffee someplace. And I was watching <laughs> your <laughs> general government discussion, and you've already got people coming in asking for 3% raises. I'm sorry, but a lot of retirees and a lot of older citizens are going to be paying the bill. We've got to be a little careful, I'd say, on raises. So that's just, just a thought. Um, <laughs> if Christina has bottomed out, we'll do Ginny on this. Madam yes. Chair, are we still yes. on the Selectman's report? It's like, oh, are yeah. we done? Yeah. You, yeah. Did you have something? You have a question? Yeah, I think that there might be other members that might want to comment on the Selectman's report. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Regina, you mentioned uh, last year, and could you restate what you said regarding last year? I mean, I would, didn't personally expense, but I just said it was chaotic. Mm -hmm. And the chaos uh, was actually most manifest here in the budget committee. January 7th, January 8th, the last two days we had to get our budget prepared for the public hearing. We had a slew of changes coming in, to, or requested changes coming in from the Board of Selectmen. We spent a three-hour meeting on the 7th and a four-hour meeting, up to midnight. We're not, we're not going to do that. Okay. No. Dealing with those changes, in addition to having to correct warrant articles at the public hearing itself, it was just technically incorrect mm. warrant articles. So, when there is an anticipation that we're going to be a little bit delayed this year in mm. in the interest of greater precision, after having endured those torturous meetings last year, I appreciate the desire for precision, but. And I'm happy to, you know, to give you the time and all that stuff. But that means we should have the expectation of precision. Is that fair? Yes, I, okay, would, I would say great, that great. was I fair. just wanted to be clear that, you know, we are being patient and we're not going to make noise about a week or two delay because in exchange at least we know we're going to get really precise, good data. That doesn't have to be changed at the last second in this great wave of changes that we got last year, which produced a general perception of the chaos that I think you were referring to. Fair enough. Well, quite frankly, I have no intention of accepting any last-minute changes. Any of that stuff will have to be worked out on the floor of the deliberative session. We're not going to be going through that. Um, one, one other thing, Regina, just you'd keep in mind, one thing I'm going to be looking at, uh, and the chief uh, touched on it last night, I hope what we're going to get in the selectmen's requested expenditures is consistency in the gas and diesel purchases. I hope we're not going to be all over the board, whether we're going in with the state bid or something. I'm going to be looking for every department to have the same amount of money for their gas and diesel purchases right across the board, whoever's car it is, whether it's recreation or 
uh, you know, fire or <coughs> town manager or anything. I, I want to see consistency in that gas pur purchase price. Um, okay, Mrs. Bridal Russell, ma'am. Yes. Well, the school department starting their um, deliberations on the fir November 1st, 3rd, and 8th and 15th, and we will have the budget co committee's books to you by November 21st. <laughs> and um, so that's a commitment we don't need to make a formal request for. Is that and that's exactly right. Okay, thank you. Now there. Um, Competent. <laughs> and uh, we'll see where we go. Um, the Hampton Academy Committee is moving ahead fast, not fast, but moving ahead with their um, project for to be a Warren article again this year. There is an open house on October 25th. At starting at tours at six, and uh, it's welcome to the public. You can come in, you can view the facility as it is now, and you can also hear the updated plans on for renovation. So that's mm -hmm. what's going on with the school. Six p.m. to seven p.m. is is tour. the tour, and then seven p.m. is the forum and so forth. Yep. And uh, I have uh, confirmed with. Uh, um, Amanda Cooper at the library that she will be happy to accept a stack of uh, pass outs for okay. the public to be uh, informed and uh, if you would be kind enough to bring some pass outs when you guys have them ready to the budget committee okay. and uh, also uh, perhaps Regina could check for you to see if the school can put a pile of the pass outs on the desk in the foyer okay. so that people are, who are bored waiting for their registration can read up on the on the project. Um, do you keep going, Jenny, and then I have something nope, for you. that's it. <laughs> okay, Lynn, let, what we started talking about when we began the meeting, the uh, superintendent, the superintendent of schools, salary um, and contract extension. Would you just please explain? The contract itself is Kathleen Murphy has a commitment that she will be the superintendent for the Hampton School System, she got a four-year contract. Starting July 1st, 1st. 2017. Yes. And and she the, her salary will be determined each year as she is evaluate her evaluation. So the salary increases will be determined that, that's by what her I was getting evaluation. At. So her salary as she as she is sitting there on J July 1st, 2017, will be X dollars, and that will stay the same through the remaining three years of the contract unless, unless the her, school board right. factors in a raise along the way. Right. Does that help? Well, it further enlightens. Yes. yes. The, the, well, I just don't want any big. Does it, does, does that necess necessitates a warrant article if you want to do things properly. If you don't want to do things properly, then it's yes, your it own at your own peril. Peril. Okay. The uh, may I speak to the SA ninety eight? Please do. Jenny. Uh, yeah. Last year during the um, proposal for remodeling. Yes. Uh, the academy. Mm -hmm. Uh, the IT committee met and did a fairly extensive review of what was going on in that space. And we recommended, and I believe that the superintendent agreed, that the fiber optics was absolutely essential if it was going to be a modern renovation. Absolutely. And um, I understand from someone who was buzzing in my ear prior to the meeting last that there's actually been a separation now that the fiber optics is going to be done under a FED federal grant they're pursuing part of it, it will not be part of the remodel is that true fiber optics I'm not sure I'll have to check on that and get back to you but I know fiber optics is the number one priority because you can have all the equipment you want but if you don't have it to run it then it's no good the IT so, committee stressed that yeah uh, for good reason you need a lot of bandwidth when you have your curriculum entirely dependent on internet mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. so you know we've got to get that infrastructure in place otherwise you're gonna run into serious problems down the road as that the, the demand for bandwidth is only going to continue to increase. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's very important that somehow it get addressed. It, it's going to be because it's number one on Greg's list as well. Our I, our technology director. Right. And he's been addressing it now, and it's his his number one priority. 
I, I, I heard you know someone buzzing in my head that there was maybe a federal grant that was going to handle that. I'm sure if there is, Greg has applied or will apply. Yeah, I, I'd appreciate you, you know I will continue to ride check. herd on that because it's really very important for the for the uh, for the academics. It really is. Yeah. And it strikes at the core of what you do. Exactly. Exactly. Relative to the uh, the contract, um, I I believe the phrase is sandbornizing. That you, um, that you were yeah. referring to in terms of having to put money to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even if sandburnizing was zero, that's still sandburnizing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so what you're proposing is is that if you were to sandburnize this, it would be zero. And But still a, a Warnock would be required with a zero sandburnization, right? And for those who aren't familiar with sandburnization, there was a court case with the town of Sanborn some years ago that required such contracts spell out year by year the increases. Okay, and that's what we refer to as sandburnizing. And, and so th th maybe it is zero, 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 zero for those four years, but that's what the Warren article should say. It does need to be a separate Warren article. And I still look forward to favorably reviewing it. We will check on that and get back to you. And that was Sanborn Regional that had the yes. 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 Kingston, New Hampshire. Yes. Just yes. to be, have yes. the facts straight. Mm -hmm. Yes. The zip you, code. <laughs> yes. Zero said, something. Well said, Ginny. Yes. Um, before we go on to Mr. Ladd, and we will get to Mr. Ladd. Am I done one, now? Yeah. One thing Regina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <there we> <laughs> one thing Regina yes, does need to put. Right? Hello. Howdy. Let's calm down here now. Uh, one thing Regina uh, could have mentioned, and I, you should mention it, the one million dollars. Yeah, I was going to mention the that. unfunded. We took uh, that out of the unfunded balance to reduce the tax rate. To offset the tax rate, so that and now it's just under six million, and the unfunded balance was a yeah, I think which it's is like, a healthy, and it's still close to the ten percent. Yeah. yeah, which is a healthy uh, balance. 10%. Excellent. And now, Mr. Ladd, the Hampton Beach Village District. And while we're talking about deadlines and budgets and so forth, traditionally, poor Mr. Jones, traditionally we have spent our February regular budget meeting reviewing the Hampton Beach Village District budget and warrant articles, if any, and we will do the same in this year. Well. What's going on down <laughs> in the district? Well. At first, I'd like to take a moment to explain that the tax rate in the district applies only to properties in the district. Right. And it's based on two separate rates, an exempt rate for people who do not rent or gain profit from their property, and a non-exempt rate for those who do. And <clears throat> Some would argue that there are added, added police and fire protection costs in the district, which is true. However, 95% of those costs are generated by the fact the Atlantic Ocean is in the district and the state park is in the district, which requires those services. Now, as far as what we're doing now, November 9th, and anyone in this room or anyone hearing this, is welcome to attend our November 9th meeting, a monthly meeting, 5.30 at the Village District meeting room at the Brown Street Fire Station. We're gonna have the town planner and a representative from the Rockingham Planning Commission discuss the continuation of trying to get into the community rating system. Anyone who hears weather reports knows this is going to be nothing but a larger problem going forward. Flood insurance, the cost of flood insurance, and flooding. And as a caveat, I would mention, you do not have to be in a floodplain, as many of these events are occurring in traditionally non-floodplain areas around the country. Yeah. In December, uh, December, the end of December, New Year's Eve, we have a traditional fireworks shoot on the beach. This year, we have asked, and as far as I know, the high school has accepted having their choral group come to that event and sing seasonal appropriate songs incidental to the event. And the Blue Ocean Society will remain open and provide hot chocolate and things of that nature to the crowd. And I believe <coughs> In the last couple of years, the state has already also opened the pavilion upstairs in the Shell Building to support this New Year's Eve event. 
as far as last summer, it was a very effective summer. We had uh, caused the incredibly nice weather. You people uptown don't understand that we control the weather, and this year we decided to make it work for us. And because of the fortuitousness of having an endless sunny summer, revenue was up, the businesses had a very good year, the parking lots both for the town and the district had very good years, uh, and uh, the, I guess the people who really suffered were the farmers. Other than that, that's all I have to say. And now when all the wells run dry, we'll look at the beach. That's right. Yeah. And we'll desalinate that water and give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, online also, I believe the town has placed the, oh, I can't remember what, what you call it, the, Regina, you'll remember, the um, emergency planning um, oh, the document the, hazardous. Hazard, I was hazardous mitigation plan. Ha yeah. Hazardous mitigation plan. Uh, try to check the town website reasonably frequently because just on the front page of the town website, when it comes up, there's some very interesting and and uh, proper information that might help you out, like the leaf collection right. at the end of the month. So that's a good way to keep on top of everything. Okay, um, I think we've beaten everything to death. Old business. Anyone want to bring up any old business at all? Old business is apparently boring. New business? Well, we do have commitments to get the budget information, so I think we really don't have anything on the table other than right. waiting, waiting for that. So. Well, I just wanted uh, to make sure we covered all the bases. I will email and call Jane Cipher first thing in the morning and explain to her that Mr. Marr has been voted as the appointee to the vacant budget committee seat so that he can go in at his uh, leisure and get sworn in. Other than the uh, two items, uh, yes. which was we were supposed to review the rules on this committee in September, which is, is, is technically an open item. And also, uh, with Nick's resignation, he not only left the chairmanship open, which you filled, and now Mr. Morris filled his at-large membership, but he was also a member of the uh, the Budget Committee's representative to the Recreation Committee, I believe. So that has also consequently been opened up. Do we need so a representative the two that to I the Recreation Committee? Well, we have previously had one. Well, I know, so but... It's, it, it was opened up as a consequence of his resignation, so it's an item that needs to be addressed. Whether we fill it or not is a committee decision, I assume. Well, if you want to make a motion to fill it, I, I don't see any need of it. But that's... I would wait and see if someone comes to you and yeah. says, I'd like it. Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Yes. Good thought. Good idea. And then okay. the, the, the rules, which we were supposed to review in September, which I know is a topic that you do not enjoy, but sorry, Mary Louise. Oh. Uh, I will get to work on the revised schedule of work sessions tomorrow. I will email that to you. It will have a date of the revision so you can keep track. Mm -hmm. That may have to change again. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, I can now, uh, well, I'll wait for confirmation from you or Kathleen, but it looks like d December 8th. Uh, will be the school board um, review and uh, warrant articles, et cetera. So I will communicate with Ginny on that. I will get that out to you tomorrow or the next couple of days. And uh, any communications that I do, I always forward to each of you mm -hmm. so that you know what's going on. Because mm -hmm. I want you to be up to date and understand everything that's happening and we'll cross our fingers on getting the uh, the budget so Madam, Madam Chair, Chair. Chair. May I, Mr. LeBranch um, so would we be interested in the next article on this list which is number 12 to adjourn uh, I have one question before you do that. All right. It's a hold for one minute for me. Mr. Pierce. Yes. Uh, are you, how are you going to let us know when we're going to start having meetings again? I'm going to get the tentative schedule to you tomorrow. The earliest would be November 8th. Okay. 
But I think Mr. I think Chairman Bridal was just a little bit optimistic, thinking that you're going to finish your reviews on the seventh, and I don't yeah, think you're going to have to. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have print out some stuff. So probably November tenth, maybe if we hold our breath. But I will I will do a revised schedule every time we need a revised schedule and email it to you immediately. I promise. Thank you. Can I just okay. ask a question? Please would do. that be within the same time frame? So if we met on the 8th, would it be 7 to 9 at night? Yeah, well, the meetings always start at 7, yes. Okay. No yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. Unless yeah. otherwise. And we're on the calendar. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. The committee itself as a whole decided in June to discuss and determine the rules for this committee. It's still an open item. How should we proceed with that open item? Well, do you wish to make a motion or? Yeah, I think we ought to discuss the rules right now. Well, go ahead. Right now we are operating with no rules. I think that's the way we've always operated. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> only rule that I can ever remember. The only rule yet. that is actually exists is the rule that is made up on the spot by whoever happens to shout the loudest. No. Now, if you want to proceed with that rule, I'm happy to join in on the shouting exercise, but I think it's not exactly the most rational way of approaching things for those who belong to that club. Now, you might appreciate that comment. Let me make a comment. The only rule I ever remember being enforced on, or tried to enforce is a rule that somebody wants to come in and a member of the public, the committee will vote to see if they want to allow mm -hmm. that person to speak. Other than that, there aren't any rules except the RSAs. And I think the RSAs cover our situation adequately, in my opinion, because you've been using those religiously tonight, so obviously you're a big believer in the RSAs. I am extremely happy to follow any collection of rules that the budget committee wishes to adopt. I simply want to know what they are so I can conform to them. I think that now, if you want to just cite RSA 32, rule, I'm happy to do that all day and all night. Are you ready for my motion? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Are we done discussing? Well, apparently it's up to the chair. I haven't had any hands up to discuss. Well, Sonny was moment. mumbling something I couldn't make out. <laughs> mumbling? What I was mumbling is that my understanding is it's the chairperson sets the rules, and if the meeting gets disrupted, she can call a timeout and bring it back to order. There you go. Okay. So, so motion to adjourn. Wait a minute. That's Sunny's understanding. <laughs> so what I, if I'm to say, if the budget committee is going to adopt Sunny's understanding as the collective budget committee's understanding, good, good enough. Is that, is that, that works. Is that your motion, Mr. Adjournment? <laughs> Yeah, I'll second the motion. <laughs> well, good. Now it's time to discuss the motion. He said to the adjournment. Um, Steve is moving to adjourn this meeting at what time? You said that. See, this is the perfect example. 806? There are those, there are those who are trying to discuss something relative to the budget committee's operation. 6 p.m. Okay. And now the chair has decided that that discussion is not, not allowed. And so Sunny's rule is, in fact, already in operation without the budget committees actually adopting such a rule. Which actually speaks to exactly why we ought to have the rule agreed to in advance. Okay. All Thank right. Um, Mr. LaBranche's motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.06 p.m. All those in favor? You voting? Yeah, I am, but I'm not voting yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have something else? No, I don't, but I mean, if somebody's going to discuss the rules, really, we should have given them time, but whatever. So I just, the only way I can make that known is like, no. Okay, hands one more time, please, on the motion to adjourn. Okay. Um, Barnes, uh, Kravitz, Lapham, Henderson, Clough, LaBranche, Augustine Ladd, opposed, Bridal, Russell, uh, Pierce, and Jones. All right? They can stay. We <laughs> <laughs> okay, that takes care of that. Thank we you very much. We thank the crew.
in the cable. And we will see you.